Guys, welcome back to Dartford. We've got some exciting updates to talk you through today. I'm sat in reception. As you can see, I've got a bit more PPE on than last time. One, I'm absolutely freezing, and two, the ceiling is currently out. So I'm gonna take you through some of the changes that have been put in place since we were here last time, back in, I believe, October. And you're gonna see the new chillers which have been delivered, the fuel tank, the gens have been repositioned, there's a new mezzanine floor, uh, turnstiles in, the turnstiles in, man. And we've also got the ductwork up for the new pods upstairs. So we're gonna go find Callum, who's currently up there waiting for us, and he's gonna show you inside. Stay tuned. So as we explained in the last video, we've got our duct finally here for the 30 rack suite going down below us. Um, it is, as I explained in the last video, three and a half meters by two meters high. Can't really get an idea of how big that is until you stand in front of it. It's huge. Um, we've got 30 meters cubed a second running through this duct. So it's you know three, four times more than we've got in any of the data halls at the Maidstone site. Um, we've got manual control on the bottom of these for the VCDs. That's to allow us to balance the load because uh, depending on clients that go into this suite, we could have a lot more load to the front of the hall, we could have a lot more load to the rear. And as we've got a central hot aisle, it's important to balance the airflow from front to back to ensure we get even distribution of the air across the, the uh, higher density racks. Um, within this duct, as hopefully we'll show you on some V-roll, uh, we've got six fans at the other end. The six fans uh, allow us for an N plus one. It's actually slightly well, slightly better than an N plus one, to be honest. We could lose two fans and run on just the four. Um, we've got the turning vanes after the fans. The so turning vanes are very important because they ensure that we keep laminar airflow of the air as it wraps around that tight bend back towards the data hall where it passes through our chilling coils. Of course, the chilling coils, cold water powered by the chillers, They've just arrived. Let's go outside and have a look. So here we are at the chillers. These are half megawatt chillers each. So this is where the water from the data hall enters into a large header pipe, which will be sitting in front of me, into these buffer tanks. You can see one just behind me. That balances out any differences in you know, pressure, flow rate, etc., with the different temperatures of the water throughout the cycle. Water then enters into these chillers. Um, as it enters the chiller, it's really got two options. So the first option, 90% of the year, ambient temperature in this country, unfortunately, is normally below 19 degrees. What that means is we can exchange the heat through the water with enough ambient air to bring us down to our supply temperature of 21 degrees. On those rare occasions when we get a slightly hotter, sunnier day, what it does um, is it goes through the shell and tube heat exchanger on the bottom here with the refrigerant cycle running alongside. The refrigerant cycle then takes that excess heat out of the water through that heat exchanger and then the water can go back into the building through the lag pipe and back in. So um, yeah, these are pretty big, but let me go and show you something else big and impressive. And here it is, our 20,000 litre bunded fuel tank. Um, we've got a built-in fuel polishing system on this, so it ensures that the fuel is constantly kept clean. Fuel passes from this inside an internally bunded pipe. What that means is we basically got two pipes, so within the inner skin is where the fuel runs to the generators. Just outside of that is another skin, which basically comes back to the fuel tank to a little bun sensor. So if there's a leak, even a small weep within that internal pipe, it all comes back, it's sensed and the pump's automatically cut off. Um, the pipe is held at a two bar pressure standard permanently. Uh, basically it means that we instantly get fuel to the generators the second they request fuel. So a flow switch will activate, request fuel, the uh, solenoid valve and the actuated valve open. So the solenoid is a backup for the actuated valve. It ensures that we don't get any hydraulic hammering, but then also the solenoid acts as a backup. So it opens up, supplies fuel, as soon as the gen's got enough fuel, shuts off and the pump senses the two bar pressure and shuts down again. So now we'll go for a walk up the corridor and see what's changed. 
you remember those orange fences from last time? Well, here we go. Now we've actually got rooms built. So it's just important for us to have um, really good facilities for the clients as well as just worrying about the data halls. So we've got um, to my left here, just around the corner, you can't really see it. We've got a breakout area for any engineers on site, especially late, at, late in the evening. It's nice to be able to make yourself a coffee and that. We've also got a dedicated meeting room for clients. So clients can actually book out their own meeting room space. If they've got project managers down here, they can kind of converse with the build team and everything. We've also got a demo suite here on our left. So the, um, the demo suite, is kind of while we're selling it it's going to be used as basically a demonstration of all the different all the different items that people can have in their racks and stuff um, and then eventually it'll be turned into something different as of what don't really know yet so so as you see the turnstile behind me is one of the many layers of security we've got here this is going to be access controlled so that only people with access to the data center can actually get in this is going to be happening for every door down here be it on the phase two side or the phase one side so the access control will be going in soon and you know it'll, it'll have all different levels of authentication depending on what the customer requires including biometrics um, and we've got some really cool doors up here that we're going to show you you can see here we've got all the cables for phase one as well so um, our team of electricians are currently installing the lighting cleaner sockets everything i spoke about in the last video you can see it going in above us now these are the doors we were talking about. If we stop at this door just back here on your right and my left, um, you can have a look at them. So these are um, fire rated industrial steel doors. They're 2.5 meters high, uh, 1.8 meters wide. So you can roll a fully loaded rack straight through them. They're, they're big, they're solid, and they're perfect for the job. So guys, slight wardrobe change. We're actually filming this after we shot the rest of the video, purely because we had some issues come up in the editing stage. So we've done an intro that wished everyone Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, but that's now passed. So we're just gonna wish you a happy 2022 and we're gonna show you what's going on in the next video because a lot has changed in the last few weeks. So stay tuned.